Thank you. Um, one more for, for Brandon. This, there's, only a, there's a reason why we never are at the same school two years in a row. It's because I think we cause divorces. Um, so a, a huge thanks to Brandon. I know what it takes and the stress that it is on a family as well of all the stuff behind the scenes to put this together. Um, it, it's so much. And so thank you for leading this and, and bringing Learning to here uh, for everybody to enjoy. So thanks to, to Brandon as well. All right, so if you would like to return to your seats, we will wrap this up real quick. I'll turn on the wireless mic. Give you that back. Switch, make the switch here. Um, here's the, I, it surprises me every year that there are still schools that want to host this thing. <laughs> when you see how many people it takes to put on this conference, that's number one. Number two, you would think if you had that many people putting on a conference, things would run a lot smoother. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> but the problem is, like, we, we deal with this all the time. Like, we just, had a, we just had a meeting where, like, how do we get this to run smoother? The problem is, is that learning isn't smooth. And if you're going to plan a conference that is constantly changing to meet the needs of the participants, it can't be planned. And that's the that's the most fun part, and at the same time, the most frustrating part about this conference, that David Collette is up here literally putting these slides on this while you're waiting. I mean, this thing is just, it's constantly evolving in the moment. And so, uh, it's just, it's incredible that, I don't know how this whole thing got started, uh, really, honestly. We've tried to quit this thing three times. And now we've gone from trying to quit this thing for three times to now turning it into a nonprofit and spreading it around the world. I don't know how this stuff happens. Um, but I want to wrap up uh, with just a little more. Rebecca thought she had us by taking us back to the 90s. But I'm going to take us back a little bit further uh, to a, a movie that hopefully most of you in this room will remember. So I'm going to hand it over to Doc and Marty. And they arrive in almost two weeks. It's been 30 years. 
you need to go back to your schools and start planning the party. This is the group that I want to hear about the Ragers on October 21st, 2015, when Doc and Marty show up. Ringo, you're the man at the school, buddy. I want to see this. I want to see this. It's incredible to think it's been that long, you know. And here's the thing. Most of us watch that on this piece of, give me a whoop whoop if you remember this piece of technology. Yeah. Do you remember it used to have a thing that said, be kind. Be kind. Kids have no idea what that means today. No idea what that means. We used to talk on that. Do you remember? It wasn't even digital. It was unbelievable. It was all staticky. You really couldn't move that far away from the receiver. You know, we still called places, not people. You still had to memorize phone numbers. We listened to music on that. Oh, yeah. Right? That was where we, was Spotify playlist? Are you kidding me? I asked some middle schoolers at a school I was working with. I was like, what do you do? Like, we made mixtapes, right? You sat, like, we talk about kids wasting time with technology today. Do you know <laughs> the amount of hours I spent fingers on the uh, play and record. Why you had to press play and record, I'll never know. <laughs> Mom yelling at me in the background to go clean the room, and I'm like, wait, I know what's the next song. <laughs> and then the DJ talks just a little too long. Yeah. You have to wait for the whole cycle of songs again. So I asked these middle school kids, I was like, that's what I did when I liked a girl. What do you do, like make her a Spotify playlist or something? They're like, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. And it's it's funny how fast this technology changes. I get hit with these moments all the time when I'm talking with kids. I was doing the rehearsal with Jason, uh, the student that was up here this morning, and I was telling him about the mic, and I was like, I said, you're going to have a mic. I said, it's a Madonna mic. And I was like, oh, that was what my generation called it. You probably called it a Britney Spears mic, and he's like, still wrong generation. I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> and I said, I said, what do you call it? He goes, a mic? Like, when did that happen? When did this happen? And here's the crazy thing. 30 years ago, they predicted 14 things correctly about 2015. Wearable technology being the norm. Voice-controlled computers. Drones reporting the news. Digital cameras. They don't quite look like that, but we've got them. Multiple screen viewing. Video conferencing. Mobile payments. Wireless gaming. 3D movies being the norm. Welcome to 2015, where science fiction is meeting reality. I really believe we are living in a time where if we think we can create something, we just do it. The technology is here. David Lee, you'll be excited to know that Nike is making the shoes. Who remembers the shoes? Woo -woo! Yeah, we were going to have them. See, here's the thing. It's not that we can't make them. We didn't. And as soon as Nike realized that they didn't make the shoe, they just set out to make it. It is going to be, they're actually trying to release it on October 21st. How cool is that going to be? And then there was this. Anybody remember the, who, the hoverboard? Where's that in 2015? It could be the hottest Christmas present this winter. It, there are a couple different companies who are trying to create it to get it out in time. We are living in the most amazing time period of what does it mean to just be able to think of something and have the technology to be able to, to create it. See, it's okay to party like it's 1985, but we need to teach like it's 2015. And all too often still, our classrooms and our schools look like 1985. See, in 1985, we still used words like integrate, or in bed, or now we even change them to words like re infuse. See, these words aren't new. We've been using these words forever in education. And the problem with these words is it means that we already have something, and then there's that other thing over there called technology. And as long as technology is seen as this other thing, it's never going to disrupt what we know it can do. We have to start using a new word. And that new word is very simple, replace. What do we need to replace because it's 2015? It's a very simple word with a very complex answer. We start looking at things as simple as mapping skills. Why are second graders today working on a paper map? 
Pilots don't use them. Nobody that drives a semi-truck uses it. Nobody that drives a ship uses a map. Why are kids learning to write on a paper map? That is not their future. In fact, the skills are different on this map. Because on the paper map, north is up. On this map, which way's up? The way you're facing. Why are we teaching kids up is north? Latitude, longitude used to be like this, someplace randomly. Latitude, longitude is more important now than it's ever been because it tells you the corner of the street that you're standing on. Are we teaching kids that in the classroom? Are we replacing these things because it's 2015? Are we replacing things like reading for understanding? Sure, we do a really good job of teaching kids to understand a paper-based world when they're spending more and more time in a digital one. There are reading strategies and understanding the text in front of you. There are two different ways to read on the internet, ways that you don't read in a book. Right? There's long-form reading where I have third and fourth graders literally sit on their hands and read. We don't read web pages. We skim them. Right? So we have to teach you to read long form on the web. That's a reading strategy. The second reading strategy is called link jumping. This is where you read and skim. You find the hyperlink, and so you open in a new tab, open in a new tab, open in a new tab. Next thing you know, you're 70 tabs away. Not, don't know how you got there, but you've been learning a whole time. You can't do that in a book. That's a, are we teaching that in 2015? If things are becoming more digital, is that what the classroom looks like? See, here's the thing that's really frustrating me right now. I've been working with schools for the last two months, and everybody has these... Be how much time are schools spending trying to make the four C's look so beautiful? I mean, you can find millions of these things on the web. It's ridiculous. People are pointing like, that one's from my school. Yeah, I ripped them off from your school. You're putting them out there. See, the four C's aren't new. Collaboration isn't new. What it means to collaborate in 2015 is new. When we talk about collaboration, we're talking across space and time. You are not collaborating with the kids in your room on a Google Doc is not collaboration. Your kids collaborating in period one kids with period five kids is collaboration. Mir setting up stuff outside of his classroom. Do you realize everything he showed us is not in the classroom? It's all extracurricular activities where the kids have figured out and are learning how to collaborate across space and time. Why are we still, this is something that's blowing my mind, we put kids in period one, two, three, four in class or whatever your structure is in your classroom. We then set up online structures that mirror our physical one. So period one also has the period one cute little web page or portal. It doesn't have to be that way. Why isn't it you happen to have me in period one, but online, all four kids are in one big circle? Why is it that you are not creating a presentation in period one, and your partner happens to be in period five, and when the kid comes to you and says, well, I don't know how to co collaborate with them, your job is to say, figure it out. You have the tools. It works. Or what about communication? Why are we, are we teaching kids to communicate, communicate the way the world communicates? This is the most powerful communication tool ever created. I would bet if you stopped and reflected, over 90% of what you do on this device has you talking to other people, communicating to other people in some way, whether it be through listening to a podcast that somebody else created for you to listen to across space and time, whether it's you text messaging, whether it's you tweeting out to everybody what's being said right now. Email. Oh, there, it's a phone too, by the way. Right? It's a phone. You, you know that, right? You can make calls with it. We just don't do that anymore. That was its original purpose. That's not what we do with it. You know? Why is it that every time a first grader, second grader, third grader finishes reading a story, they're not emailing the author? That's a simple thing. It's a simple way of communicating with authors in 2015. And if the author's dead, here's the crazy part. Many of them still have an email address that somebody's running for them. Right? It's crazy. Critical thinking, we need to start thinking about problem finders. As I'm working with companies, more and more companies are saying, look, why do schools keep saying we need problem solvers? Solving the problem's the easy part. We can't find it. We can't find the bug in the software. We don't know 
where the problem is in the manufacturing line. We don't understand why things aren't working. If somebody could find the problem, we hire them. Everybody can solve it. We can create a community to solve the problem. We can't find it. Where in your classrooms are you creating math teachers? Have the problem already solved for the kids on the board with a mistake in it. Your today's class, find the mistake. Where's the mistake? How do you fix it from there? When we talk about create, we're talking about creating something that you can share with the world. What does it mean to share to 3.2 billion people that have internet access? What does that mean? Are we teaching kids what that means? Been a lot of conversation around that. See, here's one of the biggest things that we know about. Who in here is under the age of 34? Raise your hand. Hi. You need to be proud because we don't like you. <laughs> so there's two, we're two generations into the internet now, right? There's this age 34 to 18. It's called the millennials. We just graduated the end of a generation. And there's a second generation that we don't know what they're going to be called. They'll tell us. Right now I call them the mobile generation, right, that are in our schools today. And here's the thing we're starting to understand, that our generation, if you're older than 34, the majority of us learn through process and procedure. We like our processes. We like our procedures. We still look for the manual. <laughs> we like to have things written down. We like how, and it's not wrong. That's how we're taught. That's the world we grew up in. These generations learn through chaos and discovery. These generations want to be thrown into the deep end of something and just let them figure it out. If you try to process and procedure these generations, you are going to be very, very frustrated. <laughs> You're going to be very frustrated because they don't get it. They don't understand that you go one, two, three, when you can go one, three, five, seven, oh, there's a YouTube video, All right? One of the other things that's been very frustrating for me lately going around to different international schools is all, all these international schools, somewhere in their mission statement, it says to be a leading school in something. It's always to be a leading school, like you're going to be the best school in the entire world, <laughs> right? Every international school is like, we're going to be the best. And then... Here's the favorite part. And then I start consulting with them, and every time I bring up a new strategy, they ask me, where's the research behind that? Where's the research behind that? See, if you're a leading school, you don't follow research, you create research. You can't do that. You can't say you're going to lead and then say, who do I follow? It doesn't work. It's just frustrating me right now. I'm just like, you can't, I, there's nothing I say has research behind it. We all know that's right, right? <laughs> there's no research behind any of this. And I hope there never is, right? And, and we've had to go through this as, as learning too as well. Like one of the very first things of becoming a nonprofit was, well, you have to create a mission statement because you need it to fill out the forms to become a 501c3. Do you know how long it comes up with four words? That's like months of work to come up with innovate social learning globally. Do you know what that means? I don't. <laughs> but I know that it gives us a structure to start with. It gives us something that we can do. It's very vague on purpose so that it can allow us to innovate, allow us to be social, things that we know are good for learning anywhere in the world. And so we're going to continue to do the global part in about a month's time from now, I hope you continue to follow the Learn To hashtag because we're going to be doing our second conference in Africa and we're going to be at the, Interna uh, the American International School in Joburg. So if you know people in the region and you had a great time here, please tell them to come. Registration is still open. It's going to be a fantastic conference. In April, we are having our first ever Learn To Europe conference. And that's at the American School of Milan. And we have some representatives. Will you guys please stand up? So they've been here this week. After they saw how many people it takes to put on the conference, I don't know if it'll still be there, but, um, right? So we'll be there in April of this year. Uh, we are coming back to Asia next year. The dates are October 6th through October 8th. And... Are you ready? You can join us at Saigon South International School. And the go ahead team. So here they are.
So I hope you come join us next year if you're still in the Asia region. You can come check us out next year. We also are happy to announce this just happened a week ago that we will also be in South America for the first time. Uh, and we're going to be in Ecuador, so that's going to be very that's going to be very cool. If you have friends that teach in South America, uh, make sure they know about this. We'll be opening registration shortly. And look what look, <laughs> they just found water. We are on a mission. We are going to make this work. Uh, so stay tuned. We are going to get to Mars at some point. I hope you had a fantastic conference. Um, Know that learning to, learning to is a community. Every time we come together, it, it's just, I have so much fun. It's, it's really just this community of people that are willing to learn. And to me, that is the best kind of conference. So thank you again, and we're going to transfer into the best part is the raffle giveaway.